I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. Today we have Roger Kegg, who's joined us all the way from Texas. I appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Thank you, Earl. You're on a little vacation here, are you, passing through with your wife? We'll yeah. get to meet her next week. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, we were actually on our way uh, to Denver. We went to Denver uh -huh. to visit my daughter who lives there with okay. her, uh, with my granddaughter and her husband. And okay. Then uh, we left a little bit early and I thought, let's go down to Salt Lake City because I wanted to meet uh, some people down here. Yeah. And you, one of them are you. Oh, well, thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm and, glad we were able to connect. Yes. And so yeah. I appreciate you coming and sharing your story and it's an interesting one. So yeah. were you born in the church? Were no. you? Where were you born? No, I was I was born in Sher in uh, Denison, Texas on an Air Force base. My, oh. my father was a uh, career Air Force uh, enlisted man, yeah. sergeant, and um, so we lived all over the United States, uh, England and Germany oh goodness, and Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, when we were in California, my dad was stationed uh, uh, near San Rafael, okay. and um, the missionaries came knocking on the door. Really? Just that simple, huh? Yeah. And yeah. I was about eight years old. Okay. And. Uh, so they, uh, uh, seven or eight anyway. Had your folks been religious up to this point? No, no. Uh -huh. My dad was raised a Catholic, kind of, uh -huh. and my mother was in the Baptist church as a child. Okay. Uh, but they were pretty irreligious at that point. Yeah. My father was an alcoholic. Oh. Uh, had a big problem with that, and that's what drew my mother to, uh, to the Mormon church, was the word of wisdom. Yeah. And uh, you know the strong. What did your dad think about that? Well, he he knew he had a problem. Oh, okay. He just had a trouble staying away from it. Yeah. And uh, so he felt like that kind of structure might help him mm. because it got him in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so they joined the church. They joined the church. Yeah. And uh, I was raised pretty much the only religious background that I had was in the Mormon Church. Okay, baptized then were you? Was or baptized they, they did, did, uh, going into eight nine years old, you yeah. know, and it may have been seven when when they first uh, started started learning the about church, the church. Right. And you, did you go to church then after that? Yeah, we or? went to church every Sunday. Yeah. And, and this uh, all in California, was it? Well, no. We, my, my dad moved again. Uh, my dad, uh, yeah, he, he um, we moved several times. Okay. And it was kind of spotty uh, during the moves. We moved to Mississippi. He was changing career fields in, mm -hmm. in the Air Force, and he had to do training there. And okay. uh, then we moved back to California. Um, I mean, and, and, oh, to Oregon, excuse me, to Oregon. Okay. It's all been so long ago. Yeah. And uh, we were uh, somewhat, uh, it, periodically we would go to church. It's kind of uh, hard when you travel around so much, I know. <clears throat> my dad retired in 1965, then mm -hmm. we went back to, to Sherman, and then we became, and I was like uh, 14 years old at that okay. point, and we became 
very regular attenders to, to a, a branch, a new branch that was oh. built. We were meeting in like a warehouse at, um, at yeah. first, and then they built a branch because there was enough people. Yeah. And uh, so we were, every Sunday we would go. Feel like you had a testimony of the church, even yes, as I, a young man? I, I would stand up and give my, my testimony. Uh, but I think probably more because everybody else did. Uh -huh. um, I believed the only religious training I had was Mormonism. Yeah. And I wanted to believe. And I felt like I did believe. And I did give my testimony. Um, and so I, I attended seminary uh, oh, okay. in high school. Yeah. Get up at four thirty. Probably early morning. morning yeah. Right, <laughs> and learn about church history and about the yeah. uh, about Joseph Smith. Any and, questions ever come up that bothered you? No. Back in those days. No, I, I was. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't think that deeply at that point in my yeah, life. Yeah. Yeah. I just kind of learned about it. I'm really glad that I did go because I understood church history and I understood church doctrine. Mm. And that really was uh, good for me later yeah. on because uh, it, it, it gave me a clear understanding of the difference between Mormonism and Christianity once I investigated Christianity. Um, my wife and I got married in 1973 after I spent four years in the Coast Guard. Oh, so you joined and the Coast Guard after high school, After I guess. high school. Okay. So I didn't have a desire to go on a mission, and I didn't have the resources to go. Okay. And um, so I, if I'd had the resources, I might have had a desire. But, yeah. Um, so I... So you get married and... I got married when I got back in 1973, and um, we uh, cruised along. Really, religion wasn't important to us for about three years. And then we started having children. Uh -huh. And I started thinking about, you know, these our, our kids need to have some, some value kind of training. A, yeah. And and so we uh, it, we were in uh, Dallas. Uh, we were in Garland, Texas, but the East Dallas Stake was where we attended oh. uh, services. Okay. And um, they were getting ready to build a temple. Oh, the Dallas Temple, in, yeah. In, in the 80s, yeah, uh, that's the Dallas right. Temple. And uh, we were in temple classes, and we were temple prep classes to get married uh -huh. uh, for time and eternity. Yeah, and uh, we had a lot of relationships within that church that we thought were really, really good and yeah. uh, that stake. Yeah, and um, so I, I I worked with a couple of Christian guys, and uh, they kept telling me I wasn't a Christian, and I kept you arguing didn't believe with that, them. of course. I did not believe it, yeah. and. Uh, we go back and forth and back and forth. Well, I didn't know that they were praying for me very, very strongly. So what did you think about Jesus and Christ? I thought at that Jesus point? was a, um, was a, uh, he was, he, he, he was someone that was born and as a, a virgin, although I knew the doctrine that Oh. God came physically to yeah. Mary. You believed he was your brother, your elder brother? I, I, I believed he was my elder brother, yes. Yeah. And that he was right. just first born up in heaven, and yes. that's what I always yeah. believed. And and, yeah. I also believed that he was uh, Satan's brother. Yeah, oh yeah. So Satan, uh, Satan that was, was taught to me in, in, uh, in seminary. Sure. So, and that, that Satan had a that's, plan of salvation, and Jesus had one, and... Uh, Heavenly Father picked Jesus. That's right, picked yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And Satan threw a fit, so still <laughs> throwing a fit. And took all, so, a third of the hosts of heaven out or right, something. Right, yeah. right. And I've searched everywhere in the Bible, and I can't find that anywhere, about the third <laughs> of the host of heaven. <laughs> so, um, but... So did you go studying at all to prove your friends yes. wrong? Yes. Oh, I started reading the Bible. Oh. And, and for the first time in my life, reading the Bible. I had read the Book of Mormon. Did you ever carry the Bible to church as a I, Mormon? I don't believe I did. Oh, didn't I you? I don't believe I did. See, I had I the quad, what, yeah. they, what we call the quad. Right. I had the four standard works. And so I always had the Bible with me. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Never opened it too much, but <laughs> oh, I read it a couple of times. But right. Anyway, so... Well, uh, mainly I had read the Book of Mormon, yeah. and I was challenged to read the Bible, and yeah. I read it, and a lot of scriptures popped out at me that were in direct contradiction <laughs> to what uh, Mormon doctrine was, and when I asked questions about it to the bishop, I was told that it was mistranslated. 
Of course, I had already heard that. Yeah, isn't that an in interesting seminary. concept? That, yeah. uh, maybe the worst thing Joseph Smith ever did was that eighth <laughs> article of faith. Right. That the Bible's only is. correct as far as it's translated correctly. Right, and only the King James. So. Yeah, 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 King James only. Back then. So all this study that we've done in the last 400 years and right. all the Greek and Dead Sea Scrolls and all that just doesn't count for anything. And, yeah, right. Isn't that amazing? No, yeah, yeah. it is amazing. Yeah. It is. So did you continue having dialogue with these guys? And Yes, uh, I did. And um, they gave me one book called, uh, it was The God Makers. It was Ed Decker. Oh. And uh, his it was his first book, I think. Yeah. And I read that and everything that he said in there about the Mormon church was not anti-Mormon. It was truth. And but quoting, I was quoting people in the right, church. Right, and, and I asked questions about that uh, in the stake that I was in, and, and I was told that I should throw that book in the trash, yeah, sure. and that it, it was uh, anti-Mormon propaganda. Yeah, and and so that, I came uh, home on Easter Sunday uh, in in 1983, and I told Linda, and I, I worked nights. I, I'm an RN. And uh, I told Linda, I said, we're going to leave the church. And she got really upset because she had developed a lot of uh, relationships and everything. Sure. And well, I said, well, here, read this book. And I've read it, and I know the truth about this book, that it is true. What are some of the particulars that drew, you were learning there through the book? And I mean, well, what's the concept there? My, my mom and dad had been sealed in the temple. So I had, we were sealed to, to them. So I hadn't gone oh, through the Oh, you went the in temple. and kneeled at the altar right. and was sealed? Right. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, in Mesa, Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we were children. And uh, so, but I had, and I had talked to Temple Mormons and they, they had, in a, a roundabout way, had told me about the, the temple rituals. Yeah. And so, and, that, and that's what Ed Decker he was written. kind of exposing it, or the background on, yeah. on Joseph Smith. Okay. Um, the uh, you know, it's been a lot of years. So well, all and, this the, and the title itself right. is as you know, as the couplet the, is as man is God once was, right. and as God is man may become. Right. So Mormons believe that they can become a god. Right. Yeah. And that is you know polytheism and, and yeah. it's not Christian. And, and you know what it does, It did as I've looked at it now after these five years out of the church, is that it diminishes who my awesome God is. Right. Because he's just ahead of me in line. He right. just happened to come along first. Same with Jesus. I mean, sure. they just happened to be there first or something. It diminishes who, who, who my God now really is. Right. Such who, an awesome who really God. was the creator God. Yeah. If there are a lot of other gods out yeah. there. It's, you know. it's amazing, the so, subtle difference. So right. did these Christian friends continue? I mean, they're the ones that gave you the God maker, I guess. Right. And so were they pleased or did they have answers oh, yeah. for some of your questions oh, and they stuff? Had, they were able to answer yeah. all of them. They were devout Christians okay. and studied and, and, uh, and I couldn't argue with them. Uh -huh. I mean, there was no argument there. When I found out, I thought that Mormonism was true Christianity. And Linda asked me, my wife yeah. asked me, you know, why didn't you tell me some of these things? I said, I thought you already knew. <laughs> well, you now know? she was, she was actually converted. We'll hear her story, like I right. say, next time. But right. uh, she was actually converted. And so was she pretty shocked at your... Yes, yeah. she was really upset. I mean, here you are. And she her. was really angry at my friends. <laughs> that, you know, she, here we were, we were in a, you know, and, and Mormonism looks so really nice from the outside. Yeah. And culturally it is. And uh, it, it is. And, and we were having a good time and we sure. had a lot of friends and, and yeah. they turned against us. And, oh, did they? Yeah. And we had Bishop over at the house telling Linda that she needed to divorce me because I was sending the whole family to hell. Oh, no. And all that did was reinforce my decision because yeah. I, did, I knew that, you know, if I was in a Christian church, I would never uh, have a pastor come and counsel my wife to divorce, to divorce me. me. Yeah, that would yeah. just. Yeah, but you were, you had been taking or were taking temple prep classes, so we you were. could go through this t Dallas temple, I guess, right. eventually, and so that, yeah, I can see where that. Uh, now you wouldn't be able to do that. I mean, well, I was totally naive about true Christianity, 
Yeah. I, I, I've never been exposed to it before. Well, let's explore that just a little bit. What do you see now as true Christianity? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> completely different. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not in, a, in an institutional church. We're in a, a group, we call it organic church, where we uh, meet together in, in uh, each other's homes and we don't have any hierarchy. Uh, we are all priests in in his church. We're all in the body and, of Christ, right? Right. right. And, and where two or three are gathered, brothers and sisters both. Where two or three are gathered in my name, right? You know that was part of the our big thing in the Mormon Church is the apostasy, right? And the need for a restoration, right? And for some reason, that where two or three are gathered in my name, just struck me so much. Uh, there will I be also, right? Uh, struck me so much because I know that there were Christians all the way through who were gathering together right. and Christ was there. Well, that's, a, that's what and I that's saw what in the New do. Testament, you yeah. know, is, is, a, is groups, you know, Paul planting churches yeah. and then leaving yeah. and uh, leaving the Holy Spirit to guide those groups. Right. And, and that's the concept that we meet under. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have friends that tell me, oh, would there, there'd be just chaos in your group if you don't have a leader <laughs> and uh, there never is and and you no one, Jesus is your leader <laughs> Jesus is present he is invisibly yeah. present with us and in us yeah and uh, and those those meetings just go great and and there, there always seems to be a theme that emerges yeah. and you know uh, another scripture that was important to me was my yoke is easy my burden is light right. did you feel uh, that a pressure for preparing for the temple. Uh, oh, definitely. Keeping the commandments uh, or these so-called commandments. Right. The Mormon. Make sure that you pay your tithes yeah. and uh, that you're uh, that you know that you're chaste and all those things are good things. Yeah. But uh, but the legalism, uh, you know, those things are supposed to come from within you, yeah. not from in outside. The heart. In the heart. And and I believe now that. You know, Jesus lives in me, and, and he is changing me from the inside out. And that's so different. So, than, not the yeah. outside in. Yeah. How about the cross? Did you have any, how, were, how was the cross for you as a Mormon? The cross was just a starting point. As a Mormon? As a Mormon, oh, and it? I felt like I needed to work for my own salvation. Yeah. And uh, now I don't feel like I have to work, that I have to let him work in me. And yet you do works because you want to be more Christ-like. It's that's right. Yeah. That my my desires have changed. Yeah. Well, so yeah, we we feel like we uh, in Mormonism we're just having to work along and f do our little checklist. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so have you stayed friends with these Christians? Oh yes. Have, yes. Yeah. I have. Yeah. 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 Are they part of your? No, they're group, not part of our group. group. No, yeah. they they didn't go that way. They moved, you know, and that was thirty three years ago. So oh my goodness, you know, so so this has been a long, you've long, been a long time, time ago. Time yeah, out. yeah, yeah it's, we've been out for a long time. Yeah, but uh, has I it am, been a joyful journey though? It it wasn't at first. Really? Uh, we, okay. we we went we became Baptist, and uh, I just. You know, I, I believed in Jesus, but I just didn't feel him there. Was that a little more legalisms and, a and there was more structure? Legalisms and there was, I mean, it was like we just met together once a week or, tw you know, Wednesday night, two, two times a week. And, and, you know, it was not what I was looking for. Oh, okay. uh, we went on and we went to a couple of Baptist church. One was more of a non-denominational. They didn't have Baptist on the marquee. Then we went to a, a really um, small uh, church that was uh, non-denominational, and uh, we were really happy there for about two, for me, about two years, for Linda three, yeah. uh, until the pastor started to show that he was very much a controlling individual, <laughs> even though he stood up we're, there. We are human, aren't we? We are. And yeah. we're, we're sinners and need, and need a savior. And, and, and <laughs> you know, if, a lot of times when you give somebody power, it 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 yeah. changes them. Even so. even the best of best us, of as, us. You, right. as you would say. So. Right. So. And that's one of the things I like. I do like about the freedom we have to be able to go and search and and find a place that we fit right. in and fits our personality. And but I do enjoy the music and I enjoy the uh, 
all about Jesus, going through the Bible and right. Yeah. And, well, I do too. And, and that was so different. So no, no, I, I yeah. mean, but as Mormon, we just that's it's so different. Every, almost everyone that's come in to be interviewed, their first experiences in a Christian church is all of a sudden we're worshiping Jesus. Right. We're talking about Him. And, right. And that's so different. And I didn't mean to give the impression that I just felt like there was more. Yeah. And I found, and he has actually put me where there is a lot more. Well, that's great. Where we share our lives together. Yeah. And uh, we're close, like a family. Yeah. So I never felt that, and uh, that, and and not that it was bad. It was good. And and institutional churches do a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And if that's where people so, fit in, that's, that's fine. That's right. That's yeah. right. This is not for everyone. Yeah. yeah. But it's so much more, like you say, about Jesus. And I always felt like, uh, even on my mission, I've said this before, but it just, I always felt like I was preaching the church. Right. You know, you're going to join the church. You become right. a member of the church. You know, it's, it wasn't about Jesus. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I was taught that Joseph Smith had the keys to the kingdom, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, I mean, where does that put Jesus? Yeah. You so know. what do you think the Mormons most misunderstand about Christians? Uh, I think they misunderstand that, you know, who Christ is. That the Christ that they follow is a different Christ than the one that we follow. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was said that there would be false Christ. Yeah. And, and the whole system and the theology is you know, not, is not Christian. I mean, when you read the Bible and you study the Bible yeah. and you get rid of these filters that, you know, everything's been mistranslated. Yeah. And if you dig into it, if you read it superficially, you will not see the truth. Right. But if you I study it, that. if you study that. it and you, and you develop a hunger yeah. for the truth, the truth will be revealed to you. And it, and it, for me, it wasn't a burning in my bosom. <laughs> It was just, a, just a, the truth. It was a piece that yeah. surpasses understanding. Yeah, that's that is different. What what would you recommend to the Latter Day Saints? What 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 references or what kind of books or things would you have them look at? Dallas Willard's Divine Conspiracy, uh, Michael S. Heiser's uh, The Unseen Realm. Um, These are Christian. Yes. Authors. Oh, yes. I yes. don't recognize them as Mormon authors. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, they're not no. Mormon. No, these no. are Christian authors. Yeah. Uh, oh. Have you ever Have you ever read Grant Palmer's book or heard of Grant Palmer? I've heard book? of Grant Palmer. I have not read it. No. Yeah, it's a, that's an excellent book and kind of showing the some of the problems with Mormonism and okay. Yeah, out of the Bible and even in the Book of Mormon, but. Most of the books that I read about Mormonism were back in 1983. Oh, and, okay. Uh, <laughs> Since then, you've moved on. I've moved on, oh, yes. Well, good I for have. you. Praise so, God. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you, uh, and uh, in your travels, you're able to meet new uh, Christians? Do you feel a fellowship with those? And Definitely. I mean, yeah. I felt that with you, just yeah. meeting you uh, as we have. It's, right. Uh, yeah, it's just a, such a good feeling. It uh, is. You know. Yeah, you you know when you meet someone that knows the Lord, yeah. it's it's like you have you have not you've met a new friend. Yeah, and it's like you've known them. Yeah, it really is. So, well, that's neat. So, any thoughts you've got? Uh, well, we went to uh, Temple. Uh, oh, you went to Square, Temple Square. yesterday, yeah. and uh, we had a couple of ladies, uh, young ladies, very young. Yeah. Uh, one from Germany and one from uh, Taiwan. Okay. That uh, we were sitting, um, trying to cool off a little bit in the shade, and they yeah. came up and started talking to us. And what did you, what'd you talk and, about? And and they they started talking to us about the church. Yeah. And uh, they started talking in the you know the area about what do you think about the, this church and I I said do you really want to know <laughs> <laughs> and I and I and I told uh, them and and it was like deer in the headlights and it but I hope that I planted to see what did you share I just shared that uh, that I had found out that uh, the the church uh, after being in it for years was was a false gospel and that uh, probably are. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised they didn't leave. You yeah. know, they said they stood there and, and they heard me out. And, yeah, and but uh, were you they know, encouraging that, you to read the Book of Mormon? Yes, or? they asked me if I'd read the Book of Mormon. Yeah. I said I sure had. Yeah, 
and uh, that I felt like it was plagiarized uh, Christianity, and that the, even the, the Mormon doctrine today does not uh, agree with it. And there there had been many many changes in the uh, Book of Mormon since it was first published. Yeah, that's what got and, me. <laughs> but there isn't any Mormonism really in the Book of Mormon. No, there's there no isn't. temple worship. There's no. It's, it's a Christian for the dead. book. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And then at the 1830, when someone asked me now, I try to remember this, when somebody asked me, have you read the Book of Mormon? I say, well, which one? You know, right. 1830 is a little different than the one we have today. So, right. yeah. In and fact, our, the 1830 is even more Christian. Because, and our God is the same today, yesterday, today, yeah. and forever. Yeah. He doesn't change. Yeah. So did they have any, uh, did they stand there and listen to a little bit? Oh, yeah, they sure did. They listened to until, you know, finally uh, I run out of things to tell them and, <laughs> and uh, it told them to have a good day and, and yeah. that I hope that they would uh, Read the Bible, meet, maybe. <laughs> meet the truth someday, which is a person, yeah. and that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's just a, it's such a different, it's so subtle, and I think that's probably the challenge I feel sometimes in sharing the message because they use the same words, right? you know, and, and have uh, grace and uh, Jesus and, and everything else in, in their words, but they, right. they, they mean different things, so... Well, my, you know, I know you're going to interview my wife next week, and, yeah. and uh, but... She asked, she asked me when she read the God Makers, um, why didn't you tell me that, that they believed you could become a God? And I said, I thought you already knew it. Yeah. And, and so those things are hidden from, from new uh, converts. Yeah. And it's funny, some of the scholars and apologists say, well, gee, we've known all these things all these years, but the basic member of the church, they don't know these things. Right. And the essays, I guess you've heard about the essays that the church has issued. Have no. you heard those? Oh. No, I have not read those. It's on LDS.org. It's uh -huh. actually on their website. And they've issued, I think, 13 or so essays covering polygamy and the Book of Abraham and trying to explain away, so to speak. Somebody used the word inoculate. Uh -huh. Inoculate the young people so that they won't be shocked by these re revelations that Joseph Smith married 14-year-old girls right. and married other men's wives and so on. Right. Well, Roger, our time's up. Well, yeah, I really enjoyed quick. it. Well, Thank and you for this opportunity. appreciate you sharing. And, uh, you know, I, I, th I think the fact that we go through Mormonism and still don't know the Jesus of the Bible, right. that's such a shame. And it so is. So I'm, I'm grateful you've been able to Find that, and it sounds like it for many years you were you were back in the early days, kind right. of pioneering things, as it were. <laughs> right, right. So I, that must have been tough with family and stuff. Yes. Anyway, we appreciate it, Roger. And uh, well, you're very much welcome. All right, and have have a safe trip and your travels, and we'll join. We'll see you another time on the Ex Mormon Files.